Labs, a full service marketing agency. Today's guest is Abigail. Abigail, feel free to introduce yourself and let our viewers know about your background. Uh, my name is Abigail Nickel. I'm the Director of Operations and E-Commerce at Goddess Provisions, which is a subscription box um, and e-commerce um, business. And I've been there for about three and a half years. Previous to that, I actually worked in a totally different sector. I was uh, working in the nonprofit sector where I was an executive director of four different nonprofits. So I came from a totally different line of work and then moved into e-commerce after that. And I love it here. Awesome. What, what inspired you to get into e-commerce? Um, you know, I was really looking for a major change after working in nonprofit for so long. Um, and e-commerce is just so much more fast paced. It's a lot more exciting. Um, and you just get to move the brand forward so much more quickly that I found it to be really exciting. Though initially I had made that switch because um, a role had opened up in the in a kind of like my dream company, it got us provisions. I just loved it so much as a customer and was very excited to try it out. And then when I spoke with the CEO, she literally created a role that was just right for me that wasn't pre-existing, that filled all of her needs um, and was just a perfect match for my skills. So it seemed like a good time to make that switch. Awesome. Well, tell me more about the awesome brand of Goddess Provisions. Sure, so the brand started out as a subscription box and it started almost 10 years ago, about nine and a half years ago, coming up on our 10 year anniversary. And um, that was really like in the booming days of subscription boxes in terms of curated subscription boxes where all the products fit within a theme each month um, and are kind of like color coded and working with one topic. So this is a spiritual brand. So it could be about crystals or divination or ritual tools or um, something along those lines. Um, so it's a lot of fun to put together those types of boxes and our customers love it. So um, in the early days, it was really kind of explosive growth um, as the subscription box industry was growing as a whole. And then it kind of petered out and then the um, pandemic hit. And that's when this industry hit another like kind of second round of explosive growth, which was really exciting. Um, and that's when I came on. So I was brought on to really scale the team, set up all of our processes, SOPs, you know, making sure that our supply chain was really clean, fulfillment really clean, all of those sorts of things. Um, and then at that point, we were also looking at how can we um, diversify our revenue stream in case this boom doesn't last forever, basically, to make sure that we had other sources of income. Um, and we're kind of testing out lots of things. And I can get into that more if you want. But we worked on that and really expanded other areas of the business. Um, and then um, we are under new ownership now, actually. So the previous owners had actually scaled down the box and put it on a pause and the new owners wanting to ramp it back up again. So now I am in the process of relaunching the box over the next couple of months, which is really fun and challenging. <laughs> definitely. definitely. What, who is your ideal target audience for the, the box and the brand? Um, it's definitely women. We're already like 98% women, our customers. So we definitely are targeting them. Um, and our, the age range has been really interesting. It's changed over the years. When I first started and even previous to that, it was younger women. I want to say like 20s and 30s. Um, and we have pulled more recently. And then as we're testing with ads and so forth, we're really seeing that it's targeting an older audience. We still have some people in their 20s and 30s, but primarily we're looking at 40s and 50s. So we're really wow. taking a look at how that impacts our branding and our product selection and that sort of thing. So it's been interesting how it can change over time. You really can't make assumptions about your business. 100%. What makes you different than your competitors? You know, it's interesting in the spirituality space, there is a broad range of um, product types and just kind of like the angle that they're taking things. And so some of our competitors are more on the witchy side. It's a little <laughs> bit more of a witchcraft focus. It's kind of like a darker, sometimes even like goth or Victorian vibe. Um, and then at the other end of the spectrum, there's more like the hippie, crunchy, like yoga, chakra sort of vibe. And we're really right in the middle. We always say that we cater to the light workers. So it's people who are interested in crystals and energy work. Maybe they're doing some spells, some rituals. They're working with the zodiac seasons and lunar phases, um, but they're they're not at either end of the spectrum. So we kind of catch all the people who are in between. And I feel like that really sets us apart right there. It's also very beginner friendly people who are interested in just starting their spiritual path, but don't really know you know, what tools they need or what processes to follow. So we're really catering to those people. And I feel like that really sets us apart from all of our competitors. Awesome. What are your uh, best selling products? Definitely the subscription box, you know, our, okay. our yeah, original course. bread and butter for sure. When we phase that out, we had to kind of scramble a little bit 
Um, but one of the things that we started since then, um, because we have a ton of product um, and inventory left over from all of these boxes um, and then other wholesale ventures as well. So a more creative way that we were trying to get through some of that stale inventory ended up being our second best selling product which was to do a build your own box concept. So it's like a buildable bundle concept, which is pretty popular in the e-com world. Um, but we package it as kind of a, you know, maybe you haven't had a chance to work with our curated boxes in the past, or you missed your chance now that the box is kind of on pause right now, you can build your own dream box, the box of your dreams, and you get to pick six products for $44. And then we have categories and people can select exactly what they want or need. And of course, the value ends up being huge compared to the price of the product. So that has turned out to be really a, a standout product for us, which was um, really a surprise. We were using it just to kind of burn through some old inventory and it ended up being something that our customers really love. Definitely. But I know you're redoing the, uh, the box now. What is the future plan for your for yourself and the brand? Definitely, definitely relaunching the box is the big thing that we're doing right now. We're also building the team back up, you know, as we ramp back up under new ownership, which is a really exciting time because it's a chance to look at everything that we're doing. So we're just launching a new um, customer loyalty program, which will be really fun because that includes, you know, all the rewards points and the referrals and all of those sorts of things. So that's a big process. Um, and we're also launching SMS marketing for the first time. It's just something that we've never done before. So we have a new marketing manager who's going to be working on that piece of it. So um, just kind of like revamping a lot of pieces of the business. And then once the box is back up and running, then we'll be looking at kind of what's next. So we have some ideas that we're tossing around on the team, but we'll definitely want to make sure that we're, um, again, diversifying our revenue streams so that we're not just tied to the box in case that industry undergoes, you know, another plateau in the future. We would want to make sure that we have other um, types of products and uh, processes. It could be educational. We do a lot of educational content. So it could be moving back into some webinars um, or courses or events or something along those lines. So we're kind of like exploring our options at this point. Definitely. Well, speaking of marketing, what activities has been the most successful to promote the brand so far? You know, we've played around with a lot of things early in the business. They grew even before I came on really just organically with no paid advertising for the first, I want to say maybe eight years of the business, which is insane. Um, yeah. This is a multi-million dollar company. So just to be able to grow to that size organically was incredible. Um, and then we started doing some um, paid advertising and we're getting back into that now. But as you know, you have to go through this warm up period and the testing again and everything. So that's a big part of our focus right now, as well as, you know, getting started in SMS marketing, which is a whole new world. Um, another really interesting area of marketing that we're kind of delving into right now is ManyChat, which I'm sure your followers are familiar mm -hmm. with. Um, but just looking beyond, you know, comment the word sale and we'll send you the link to our sale you know, really looking at creative ways we can do that. And with our customers, that means like, oh, it's a new Zodiac season, comment the word Scorpio, and we'll send you our free guide or something along those lines. So really making sure that it's not all sales oriented um, and using that as a tool just to contact our customers in different ways. So we're really trying to think outside the box, what's new and upcoming um, and testing it out to see what resonates with our followers. That's great. Well, I know you've gone through some changes. What are, and, and if you, you had a, full, a few lulls, right? What are some challenges that you faced in the past few years and how were you able to overcome them? Yeah, one of the hardest things about the subscription box industry is that the profit margin is very slim. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that it sounds so attractive that you can have monthly recurring revenue that is fairly reliable. I mean, there's some attrition, of course, but you know, it's so attractive because of that. But uh, the profit margin is very challenging. The expectation for customers is that they will get a huge value for the amount that they're paying. So our box in the past was $33 a month and they were expecting to get over $100 value. So we have to secure those products at a huge discount. Um, and they also have to fit all the other parameters of a box, fit within a theme, a color scheme, physically fit in the box and be yeah. under a pound. So it's very challenging, I would say, just even putting together the boxes um, but the, I feel like it's the customer perception that is the hardest piece of that puzzle. It has to look and feel like they're getting a, a large quantity of products that have a very high value. So they feel like they're getting not just their money's worth, but three to four times their money's worth. That's the expectation in this industry. So that is definitely the hardest part. And now as we're relaunching, of course, you know, we don't have the volume that we had before. So purchasing those products at a low enough price point to be able to hit that margin 
is going to be our next challenge for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, most of our listeners are entrepreneurs that have had that have e-commerce brands. Mm -hmm. Any advice you could give um, an entrepreneur that's looking to do a new e-commerce band for say in 2025? Yeah, I would say really take a look at your own um, strengths and understanding your own zone of genius, focusing on that. And even from the beginning, if you can afford it, hiring out for all the other pieces. I know that I as an entrepreneur and so many people that I've worked with because I've done some e-com consulting as well are trying to do everything. And boy, you can only do that if you truly have, you know, 10 different high level skills. I just think it's really unusual for anyone to be an expert marketer and an expert in operations and an expert in fulfillment and supply chain, and all the things. Uh, it's just so unusual. So I would say, don't try to do everything yourself, figure out what your real skill set is, and then hire out the rest, even from the beginning, if you can afford it, because you'll scale so much faster that way. I think that's amazing advice. Mm. Well, Abigail, I, I really appreciate your time today and sharing your story. Is there anything I haven't asked you you want our listeners to know? No, I think that's great. I think uh, really my main message is always just diversifying your revenue, making sure that you're covered. So if something happens in the economy or your industry or your business, you're pretty much covered and you've got other ways to move forward. That's such good advice. Thank you so much, <laughs> Abigail, for coming on. I, I appreciate your time. Great. Thanks for having me. Thank you.